Hi everybody, welcome to the Coleco Atom for Dummies. This is a series of videos I'm going to make where I take the time to explain various aspects of the Coleco Atom, hardware, software, peripherals, how they work, in a very toned down, as little as possible, as little techno babble as possible, so that anybody can get it. It's not an aspiration on anybody, an aspersion, I'm sorry, it's not an aspersion on anybody by saying it's the Coleco Atom for dummies. It's more of a play on the dummies manuals that exist out there. So, I hope you enjoy this video. The Atom Disk Emulator, aka ADE, is probably one of the best things to come along for the Coleco Atom in the past few years. It lets you emulate four disk drives on the Coleco Atom with no changes to the actual hardware. You just plug it in as if it's a disk drive and it emulates four disk drives. It allows you to put up to 32 megabytes worth of images on a micro SD card and access them as if they were diskettes. The instructions to build this thing are, are relatively simple. It's all open source. There will be links in the description on how to get to the instructions. But they are a little vague, especially on the pinouts up here. And they may be a little off-putting to anybody who doesn't know how to solder or doesn't want to solder, or doesn't understand transistors or resistors. So what's going on is, there is a member of the Atom community who has taken this open source design and run away with it. And basically he's been building one after another and selling them for over $100 a piece. Well, good that he's able to do that, but that really doesn't open it up to everybody. So the option has been Try to figure out the design, how to build this from this one, and this is the only instructions. And yes, they, it does seem simple, but these are the only instructions on how to build it. Or purchase one from him. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to build one of these and give you links to every part that you need on Amazon. No going to AliExpress, no buying from China. But I'm going to show you how to build this without a soldering iron, without any electronic skills just by following some simple directions. So let's just go over the parts that we're going to need. First off, the hub of it is an AT Mega 2560. That's this computer in the background. What we're going to use though, is we're going to use an AT Mega 2560 that also has an ESP 8266 installed. What does that mean? It means it has another miniature computer on it that has Wi-Fi. Completely 100% 18 Mega 2560 with an extra component added in. Why are we going to do that? Because I will eventually be offering some upgrades to the software that will allow you to use your ADE to go online and download files from the archive and maybe even access Telnet BBS's. So, first thing we need is an AT Mega 2560. You can get this from Amazon for roughly $15, $16. The actual price is in the link on the description. You can get it in two or three days. That's this part right here. The next part we need is the LCD shield, the keypad shield. That's this part right here. Again, you can get this from Amazon. I may be off on the price, but I believe this was $10. Again, the link will be in the description. The next part we need is this over here, which is upside down in the picture. This is the micro SD adapter. That's this part right here. You stick a micro SD card in there. You get these for three for five dollars, I believe they are on Amazon. Again, link in the description. And some of you who may be like me who watch YouTube at home on their smart TV or using a smart box. You can access the descriptions. All of this, these links will also be available on my website, 
8bitmillie.com and I will put a link on the homepage on how to get to them. The next part we're going to need is a cable. This is a certain kind of cable. It's a 6C6P. It's designed for an RJ25 3 line. The difference being is that the wires are not crossed or they may be crossed, one or the other. They are not a standard phone cable, so you can't just plug a regular phone cable in. Again, the link for this is in Am on Amazon, or for on Amazon is in the description. You can also use, if you have an extra keyboard cable floating around, one of them. They're exactly the same thing, they just have a coil. The next thing we're gonna need is a whole bunch of these wire connectors. They come, I believe it's 40 to a pack for five, six bucks. Not to be redundant, link in the description on Amazon on how to get them. Now we need these few pieces right here. We need a transistor, which is a PMP 2N3906, that right there. We need a 1K ohm trend, uh, resistor, that's this one right here, and a 33 ohm resistor, that's this one right here. These are all available on Amazon. They come in bulk packs. I bought the 33 ohm resistors like a hundred in a box. The 1K ohm resistor came in a box of about 500 other ones, in separate little packs of 25 a piece. And this PNP 2N3906 came in a box with dozens of others, like 25 of these and a bunch of others. But this right here, I believe was four bucks for a hundred of them. This was five, six dollars for them. This was five or six dollars for them. Again, all on Amazon, all links in the description. You can park these out and try to find the individual pieces, go to DigiKey or Mouser but one stop shop that's what I'm looking at then the last thing we need is we need something to plug our cable into this right here is an RJ25 three line telephone insert you can get these on Amazon I will put the link in the description but they come in 10 per pack on Amazon for 10 bucks or you can go down to your local hardware store like Lowe's and get one for three bucks we're going to use this one specifically because it has a lot of writing on it that helps you line things up so now we just discussed, this is all the hardware we got. And a few other things you will need. You will need a micro SD card, obviously, formatted to FAT32 to put your software on. This USB, I believe that's a C, comes with the 18 Mega 2560. You need this to upload the firmware to that, which I will show you. And you need it to power it, so you will need a USB power adapter here. Or you can get one of these adapters here but I, I prefer to use this and then the other thing you will need is you will need a computer that you can plug this into Windows 7, 8, 10 I don't know if the XP loader works on XP or the, the X loader works on XP you can also use the Arduino loader on um, Linux to copy it over but I will show you how to do it under Windows and then you'll be ready to go. So let's first step we're going to do is we're going to do some assembly. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to assemble some of these things. We got our 18 mega right here. What we're going to do is we're going to put our LCD shield on it. These, if you see, line up. I'm going to show you. See how they line up right there? Line up those there and those there. Push them in. Push them in. That's assembled. Now we're going to look at this. We're going to flip it over like this. See how these are all color coded? See how these are all color coded? We're going to grab a wire that's the same color and we're going to hook it up the same way. And I'm going to work from the inside out. I'm going to get a black wire right here. Hook my black wire up to right there to the ground. I said hook my black wire up to the ground. There we go. And then the black wire to here. Now I'm not going to show you how to put these in a case or anything, but I, at least not until I'm done, I want to show you that it works. But if you want to put them in a case, I got this little case on Amazon. It cost me 12 bucks. I like how it's clear. I'm going to take a Dremel and I'm going to drill some holes in it so we can access the buttons. But that's for future time. Right now we're going to assemble this and test it. So I got the black wire hooked up to black. Now I need a red wire 
Actually, I'm going to leave the red wire off because i got to do a little bit with the red wire. So leave the red wire off right now. And now I need a blue wire. And what I'm doing off to the side here is I'm pulling wires off of this. I need a blue wire that goes onto this connector here. Notice I'm not telling you what the connectors are called, what their names are, what the reasons are. And I'm going to plug this one in here. If you look, it's one, two, three up. It's going into... What is that one? It's going into one, two, three up right there. Now I need a green one. It goes next to the blue. And the green one goes right here across from the blue. Now I need a yellow one. No, I'm sorry, a purple one. A purple wire. Goes next to the green. And then this purple wire goes over here on the other side of the blue. And now one more wire to go on, the yellow wire. The yellow wire goes between the black and the green. So now they're all hooked up there. So we have everything on there hooked up except for the red wire. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this red wire and connect it over to the transistor. To do that I need red here and then I need the red plug there and I need the transistor to connect in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let me zoom this out just a little just in case my hands move off to the side. Take this, put this to the side for a second. I'm going to take my red wire here. I'm going to use my fingernails. You can use wire cutters. I'm going to use my fingernails. I'm just going to open this wire insulation up so I can actually see the wire. If your fingernails are not strong enough or you don't like using your fingernails, just use wire strippers. You can also use a lighter too. But see, what I've done is I opened it up. Now I'm going to take my transistor, that's this piece right here. If you notice how you lay it down flat, uh, I'm not going to tell you what BCE are other than in fact, I'll let you know E is emitter, B is base, C is collector. Other than that, we don't care no more. We're going to go by positioning. See how this thing is shaped like a circle with a flat side? Flat side down. We're going to hook the red wire up to this one. See? Flat side down, red wire to that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red wire, bend the way out over here out of the way, or, I mean my tr transistor, take it with my red wire, and I am twisting it around this wire nice and tightly. And then what I need to do is hot glue this in place. I didn't mention the hot glue, so you could use a hot glue. Now, you could also just use, I'm using hot glue because it's convenient and it's insulating, but you can also use black tape here. I'm just going to put some hot glue right here. Just to secure that little connection. Set it off to the side. Let it cool a few seconds. You want to stick to the paper, so I'm going to let it cool for a second or two. The next one we're going to do is here. I'm going to sit right here. The next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do B. I need an orange wire right here. I need a 1K um, resistor. That's this one right here. On the resistors, it doesn't matter which end connects to what. Now you could attempt to squeeze things on this hole here. The connection not too well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it with my wire connector, wire, wire cutters right here. I'm going to strip off a little bit of the end just to get down to wire like so. I'm going to take my 1K arm resistor right next to it and I'm going to twist these together really good. Fold it back on itself, twist the wire around 
the insulation some, just to give it more support. See, like so. Take my hot glue again. Just hot glue it in place a little bit, just to hold it so it doesn't go nowhere. Now, if you have a soldering iron, or if you um, you know how to solder and you have no problems using soldering, then by all means use a soldering iron to do this. But I want to show you is how to do this without a soldering iron. Now this is dried here. And what this is going to do is this is going to, I'm letting it cool a little bit. That's going to connect to the center one, B. So I'm going to take and fold the right one out of the way here. Just to get to B right there. I'm going to take this that I just hooked up, my 1K arm resistor with the orange wire. And I'm going to take and I'm going to twist it and this one together. Like so. Hold it back on itself a little bit. And clip off that excess. Fold it back on itself. Take my glue gun again. Put a little bit of hot glue on this just to, again, just to secure it so it don't go nowhere. And again, as I said, if you can, if you know how to solder and you have a soldering iron, by all means solder this together. After you've built it, if you decide, okay, I want to make this more permanent, solder it together. But this will stay together and this will work. The last one we have is C right here. This is going to go to the 33 ohm resistor to a green wire that plugs down here and then out to AtomNet. AtomNet is the system, is the computer. So I'm going to need a green wire. Let's see. Pull me a green wire off. I'm going to cut off the end here like so. I'm also going to come down in here a little deeper and get me some wire down here in the center. Ooh. Pulled off a little bit too much there. Let's try it. Can I pull it back? Uh, give me another green one. Maybe I should do it. Yeah, let me do this instead. I pulled and the insulation just came right off. So what I'm going to do is take another one. But this time I'm going to open it up with the end on here so the insulation can't come off. Pull the insulation off there. Take my 33 ohm resistor. I'm going to wrap it around the bare wire. Get a nice good connection in there. As so. Wrap the excess down around the insulation portion to help hold it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. As so. And put a little bit of, well actually I can kill two birds with one stone. This piece right here, the 33 ohm resistor, I'm going to wrap it around C, which is the right side one there. I'm going to take these two, twist them. Now don't just twist one around the other, try to get them both to twist like this. That way they don't just slide apart when you're done twisting. Cut the excess off. Fold this back over on itself. And now I'm going to put some hot glue on that. Some here to hold this connection together. And I keep iterating or I keep stressing that the hot glue will not hurt. That it's totally fine to use this. If you've ever pulled a Coleco Atom apart, you see that. The, at, the atom has a lot of hot glue in it holding the different wires in place as, strains, as strain relief. And also it's non-conductive so it will not short. And these parts only are carrying a few volts DC. I mean you can touch them with your bare hands and you may or may not even feel it. But they, they will never get hot enough to make this glue melt. So with this little contraption we got here. This right here is 
going to go on here. Now we take this right here, we're going to continue building. We're going to take our red wire, red wire right there, we're going to plug it into this last slot on the shield. It'll go in there. I'm trying not to force it. It's a little hard when I'm got the camera by me. There we go. All these wires are now in. And if you want to make them so that they don't come out, you can do this. Take a piece of black tape. Just cut off a small little strip of black tape. Even a sticker would work, like a label. But just take a piece of black tape. Just put it across the back so that they're all sticking to each other. That way, if one comes out, they all got to come out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this red wire, just as it shows in the diagram here, we're going to connect the red wire to this top corner. As such. That's our power line that controls the power to the shield, or to the SD card. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, see the orange wire coming here? This orange wire goes right here. The next one we're going to do is this green wire. This green wire goes right here. Skip a spot. See? Orange wire, green wire. Skip that spot because another wire is going in there. Now we got this far. And these, these will come out, so you gotta watch these. When, I get, when you get all done, do the same thing I did here. I'll take a piece of tape and I'll put it on there. Now we need to connect up to our cable. I have one open here, so I didn't have to open up another one. If you notice how this thing works, these cables have color coding. The color coding in here is, oh, let me show you. This is, this is I should show you this, just so if you're just grabbing a you're not buying the cable on Amazon if you're just grabbing a six line cable you have. What you want to do is you want to compare. Hopefully they're see through. But you want to compare them. This may or may not come across on camera. But if you look inside and look at the colors of the wires, you will see at least in this case here I have my colors are white, black, red, green, yellow, blue. Then from this side, white, black, red, green, yellow, blue. They go out. They do not match up. If the wrong kind of cable would be, it would be all white, black, red, green, yellow, blue. If you looked at this one, it'd be the same thing. White, black, red, green, yellow, blue. They'd be a mirror. They'd be the same thing. These are mirror images. They have to be a mirror image. Otherwise, what happens if you use the wrong cable and you plug it into this thing, you're going to send five volts down the data line. Will it hurt it? Eh, it might, might not. Data is five volts, but it ain't going to be good. So, this is the kind of cable you want to get. Stick with the Amazon link or make sure it's a 6C to 6P cable or use an old keyboard cable. One of those three. Alright, so now we're going to hook up the cable. And as you saw, I did write these down in here. This is my second version. But the first one I actually hooked up the wires backwards. I needed the pin on the other end. So I took another one of these out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up these cables, green, brown, and black. I need this end, and the unfortunate thing is I did is I put them on backwards. I put them on so that that end was in there, so I had the female end out, and I needed the female end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, and I'm going to just snip off the ends of the green, the brown, and the black. And I took in the, when you order these wires, they come in short and long. I ordered, I grabbed the long ones just so I have some more room on this. So I'm going to take the green wire right here, just set it in there. Take this little tool that's used to press it in. Just press down and make good contact with it. All the way in. Yeah, now she's in there. I'm going to take the brown wire and the black wire and do the same. Brown wire. And just so I just so I don't want to throw you off here. Green, the green is going to the blue wire. The brown is going to the yellow. The black is going to the ground, which, and this one is green. I don't know why I wrote, I wrote it backwards in here. That should be green. So if you're following along at home and you're using the same exact parts, you're going to hook it up this way. Green, brown, black. 
then our little wire holder. I'm just going to lock it in place. Oop, I put it on the wrong way. I'm going to lock it in place to hold the wires in. Yeah, that helps hold them in place. And I can take my glue gun and just... Actually, I'm not going to glue it yet, just on the off chance that I didn't get a good connection. You never know if you get a bad connection and you have to come back and fix it. Why isn't that one sitting flat? All right, so we're good there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is bring our ADD back over here, and we're going to hook it up. Let's watch our wiring again. The green wire is going to plug into... I did it again with the green one. All right, let's try this one more time with this green wire. All right, one more time with the green wire. <laughs> Sometimes you get a little off, and then you just make mistakes. I mean, it wasn't wrong, it's just I wanted I wanted the female, or the male end out, and I put it the wrong way for the third time, or the second time. This is why if you order the big pack, you have a lot of extra ones to work with, just in case. So there, green wire's in there. Now let's put this back on here to hold everything in place, like so. Something's not right. What? You don't want to close down all the way. Where is that? It does go that way. Okay. Uh, I was just trying to figure out why I didn't want to close all the way, but I guess that's just the way it goes. So now we got that there. The green wire, we plug into the green wire. The brown wire, we plug in between green and orange on the board. You tell me that the power wire. Oh no! Just tell me how much I use my phone this week. Then the black wire, as in the instructions here, go down next to the other black wire. And now we are all done. This is all wired up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of tape here. I got clean myself. So it's got glue all over it. Take a little bit of tape. And first, I'm going to flip this over here. I'm going to take these three right here. Those three. A piece of tape on them. Just to hold them so they don't come out. Then we got the red wire, which moved out on me. I have to put it back in that slot there. Take a little piece of tape. Put that there just so it don't move anywhere. And then these other ones are pretty good, but I'm just going to take and run a piece of tape around them just to make sure they don't go anywhere. Like so, on that side and and now I should have had you, I should have said check your colors, so I'm going to check my colors, but I should have said to do this before I put tape on it, but it's not permanent. Just check my colors, I want to verify everything. Flip this over so it looks like this. Now I want to verify. Black, red, brown, or black, red, blue, black, red, blue. Green, purple, yellow. Green, purple, yellow. Okay, we're hooked up good there. Now let's come over here. Black, yellow, green. Black, yellow, green. Black, purple, blue. Black, purple, blue. We're hooked up good there. Red, red. We're good there. Then up here on the top we have orange, brown, green. Orange, brown, green. So we are completely hooked up. And you notice how because of that I bent the wires out and I used a little hot glue to hold everything in place. These right here aren't going nowhere. These are nice and secure. So they're not going anywhere. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to set the laptop up. We're going to flash this with the software to run it. Alright, so now I've got the laptop set up here on the bench. It's a little darker here because I had to turn the overhead light off because it was reflecting off the screen. And I've got my ADE here, I've got my cable, and I'm going to plug it in here. Now this one I've already flashed once before. If you have never flashed your ADE, or your, your AT Mega, 
the screen will just be blank when you turn it on. This one, when I plug it in, it's going to say no SD card because it's already been flashed once before. That's what it will show every other time after you've done flashing, but for the first time it won't show a flash. Or it won't show anything on the screen. So I'm going to plug the power supply in here. Wait a few seconds and it will come up. And it says ADE because that's what's installed in here. If you turn yours on and you have nothing on the screen, your screen is all white boxes or whatever, take a little screwdriver, put it in here and just adjust this back and forth, this one, until your screen brightness is good. Now that we're plugged in, I'm going to open up the software Xloader. I'm going to put a link in the description to Xloader, which I'll host over my site, and also a link to Sean Harrington's GitHub page, which has the ADE code. We're going to open up Xloader. When Xloader opens up, we need to tell it what hex file we're going to use. The hex file is the one that you get from Sean's site. In this case, I'm using ADE version 0.91 hex. You don't want to use the, I believe it's the pro one. You want to use the one that doesn't have pro or light in the description. It's just the plain one. The device is the AT Mega 2560. We don't, it. We don't change any of the rest of them. That's the one we're using. The COM port will be different or could be different. It won't be COM1 or it shouldn't be. You just need to know which USB port you're hooked up into here. I believe if you come into Windows, if you click on the Start button and type in Device Manager and open it up, I believe it will show me the COM ports. And that should give me an idea. So yeah, open up Device Manager. If you're unsure which one you got, come down to Ports, COM, and LPT. Expand it, and you'll see this one that says USB Serial CH340. COM5. That's me. That's the ADE. So I know I'm on COM5. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click upload. And the baud rate should be 115,200. If it isn't, then change it to that. Click the upload button and it will start uploading. The LCD may or may not change as it's going, but if you look in here, you'll see some blinking lights. Those blinking lights tell you that it's doing things. So it's uploading and I believe this LCD is going to clear itself out after a while. Nope, it didn't clear. So what I've done is I've just uploaded. It says right on here, 52,784 bytes uploaded. Now to verify that, I can just take and if you, if you just uploaded yours, it may or may not tell you or anything. It may not refresh and say it. Give it a moment because sometimes it takes a bit to refresh. And it will eventually come up and say that it's the ADE. But if you unplug it and you plug it back in, it should go through the boot process and then should tell you what it is. ADE version 0.91, no SD card. Now, I got a micro SD card here. I'm going to turn off the power to it. I'm going to insert my micro SD card. Turn the power back on. See, this is how we're troubleshooting that everything's hooked up correctly. It should come up, it should say what it is, and then it should say what disk it is. Disk one boot dot disk, and then uh, there's a folder there. So it's reading the SD card. So we know all this is working now. So the last thing we gotta do is you gotta plug it into the Atom. So now we're going to move over to the Atom, and we're gonna give that a test. I've already moved over to the Atom desk here, and I started to do a test run, and I found out I had a bad connection in here. It appears that the little pieces of metal that's supposed to slice through the insulation to touch the wires didn't slice through and touch them. So what I've done is I pulled it apart and I took the wires and I stripped the end off the insulation off. Then I took the wire, the wire spun it, twisted it around, make it nice and tight and folded it over and twisted it again just to make it double it up. So it slip in there and tighten up and then just, just to make sure I test it with my multimeter make sure the line's going through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a drop of hot glue on there just to make sure it can't come apart. And then we're going to come back over here with the AD and test it. Alright, we're over here on the table, or at the desk now with the Atom. And before I go too far, I want to show you something. Remember how back in the beginning I said that these instructions are a little vague? 
and they're kind of hard to follow along. They are. I wired this completely backwards. Based on those instructions, I made the same mistake that probably a lot of people would make. So it's not green, brown, black going this way. It's green, brown, black going that way. When I got over here, I sat down and I spent some time just studying all my wiring again before I plugged it in. And I realized, yeah, I did it. So we're over here on the desk now. I got a little Atari cartridge here just there because I'm going to prop this up on there. I got the cable plugged into the front where the keyboard goes, only to make it easier accessible. You can swap keyboard and Atom Drive cables back and forth. They're the same thing, just different parts of the case. Plug that in there. I got a longer USB cable just so that I could reach in the back here. In the back I have a USB power adapter. It's a 2 amp power adapter just so I have enough power. So let's just plug it in. Set it up there. No SD card, huh? Why don't you think there's an SD card? Watch your wires. Make sure nothing's moving around in here. Tighten everything up. Hold it in tight. Good with the tape. Turn it back on. Make sure we're all hooked up good. Green, brown, orange, red, black. Everything's good. Turn it on. And there we go. So there, I must have a loose wire in here, one of these connectors, and I'm making a good connection here. Again, these are just plugging in. Afterwards, you can make them permanent, hot glue, solder, whatever way you want to do it. Now we're hooked up in here, and let's just give this a reset and see if we boot. Hey, we got a blue screen, and it's going to boot up Atomware Image Manager from the ADE. I got to open up File Manager. This is what I got on here, and I will put something else on here that will tickle your fancy. So, this is, this is boring. To me, it's good because I like these software, but I'm going to show you something that you'll probably like a lot better. I'm going to turn things off. All right, so what I did is I would take the SD card out, and I went over to my computer, and I copied, I put a copy of ColecoVision Experience for the ADE that I have available on the archive. What that has on it is over 400 ColecoVision cartridges. So what I did is I booted it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Carnival because I like Carnival. So I'm going to go down to letter C, hit enter to open that one up. Now it's loading all the ROMs images that start with the letter C. There's some duplicates and other such and, and changes in here. Some of them may or may not work. So Carnival 1982. I'm going to play that one. I plug my joystick into the computer. And we're going to start it up. The, AD, the ADE will automatically boot and let you run ROM cartridges. As long as you're at 32K or less, it will not let you run any images that use the Super Graphics module. It's not designed for that. You would have to use the Atari Max Ultimate SD for that one. So here we go. Let's just get ready to play one because I'm going to kill some things. I'm going to shoot. Ready? It's summertime. Time to go to the Kearney. So there we go. And if you never used the ADE before, it's designed to work with the reset. If I hit reset, it's going to take me back to whatever file I have set as boot.disk. So in this case, it's the Atomware Image Manager. And it's going to take me right back to where it was. And there you have it. Four. About $40, maybe a little less. If you have a couple of, I mean, what you're paying for mostly is. These two right here is a little over 30, that's another five. The parts of the, say $50. So $50 in a few minutes, you have made yourself an ADE. Yes, the wires are all over the place right now, but that's all manageable. You can fix that. This is totally usable the way it is. If I didn't care about the wiring, I could just set this right here on my countertop and use it. I mean, just, just so you can see, this is the one I've been using for two years that was sent to me originally so that I would write the boot software for this. I've been using it with no issue. I'll put it in a case. I'm going to take that case that I showed you that with the clear screen or the clear cover. I'm going to put it inside there and make it all pretty. But I want you to see that. It's not that hard at all to do. A few minutes and you got yourself a ADE. And you're not spending a lot of money. And when you're done, you may understand how it works better. Have a good day.